Thanks very much for staying with us. Time now for Iron Africa with me, Georgia Calvin Smith. Tonight, Cameroon's opposition leader Morris Campos charged with group rebellion and hostility to the homeland as the government bans protests that had been planned for over the weekend. Also, the International Criminal Court's recent acquittal of former Ivorian president Laurent Gbagbo has prompted some of his supporters who fled to Ghana during the post-electoral unrest of 2010 to return home with hopes of reconciliation. And a new study comparing Swiss cigarettes sold in Europe to those sold in Morocco, one of the Swiss tobacco industry's top export destinations, shows that product offered there is so toxic it would be illegal in Europe. We hear from one of the study's authors, an investigative journalist joining us from Geneva. But first, Cameroon banned anti-government demonstrations that had been due to happen over the weekend and next week. Authorities say that the marches have had to be cancelled to preserve public order. A series of recent rallies have led to about 200 arrests, including that of opposition leader Morris Campto earlier this week. He still claims that his loss to longtime leader Paul Beer in last year's election was down to fraud. Rights activists have also raised concerns about the arrests of two journalists on Monday night. As of Thursday night, they remained in detention. Meanwhile, supporters of Camto continue to call for his release. Indira Etting tells us more. Arrested Monday in Douala, Maurice Camto and several members of his Cameroon Renaissance Movement's political party were taken to Yaoundé and are currently being detained at a special police unit here in the nation's political capital. Now visited by their lawyers yesterday, the charges against them were made known. They are accused of hostility against the state of Cameroon, of insurrection, group rebellion and of course uh, public disorder. Maurice Camto and his party, should be noted, have continued to protest the results of the 2018 presidential elections, which they say they won and not uh, long-term mm -hmm. leader Paul Bia. A total of 217 members of the CRM party were arrested Saturday when the staged protest marches across the nation. They will be before the judges uh, Friday in Yaoundé to answer for all of these accusations against them and they may either be acquitted or further charged. It should be noted that since uh, October 2018, Maurice Kamto has continued to insist he won the presidential elections. Indira Eteng there for us. Now, there were protests outside of the Johannesburg offices of Vodacom on Thursday as demonstrators turned down in solidarity with an employee caught up in a legal battle with the telecoms provider. They're pushing for a better deal for Kozuzanan Makate, who is the inventor of a callback messaging service that reportedly earned the company about 70 billion rand or about 4.6 million euros. Back in 2016, the Constitutional Court ordered Vodacom to pay Makati. His supporters say executives are trying to steamroller him into accepting a low-ball compensation offer. A violent post-electoral crisis in Ivory Coast from 2010 to 2011 forced thousands of refugees over the border into Ghana. Ivory Coast plunged into violence after the president, Loha Bagbo, refused to concede defeat to current leader, Alassane Ouattara. Bagbo was acquitted of war crimes at the International Criminal Court two weeks ago. That's prompted the return of many of his exiled supporters. Frank Hersey tells us more. It's been eight long years since they last stepped foot on Ivorian soil. Some have been through UN refugee camps and the children have grown up as English speakers. Among the 54 refugees who have decided to end their exile are six ministers of former President Laurent Bagbo. We are very happy to be back in Ivory Coast our homeland, that we should never have left. But thanks to God, we are here today. They made the decision to return after Ivory Coast President Alassane Ouattara announced in August an amnesty of prisoners linked to the 2010-11 post-electoral crisis and the recent acquittal of Bagbo at the ICC. The group slowly make their way by bus to Abidjan, as people crowd around to offer a hero's welcome. We've had no peace since they arrested Laurent Bagbo. Now that we've welcomed the exiles back from Ghana, we want Bagbo back. Please struggle to hold back the crowd. The former interior minister celebrates and jubilant scenes are repeated in every town and junction the convoy passes. Finally, Abidjan, where the celebrations continue and the government clarifies that the returnees will be looked after. 
Repatriations are always paired with reintegration programs. Every single ministry does play a role in this. The UN agencies hope that this repatriation will be the first of many. There are six of President Bagbo's former ministers in this convoy, and it's our hope that this will be a strong enough signal to encourage other refugees who have sought asylum in other countries to return to Ivory Coast. Some 23,000 refugees are still living in neighboring countries. Almost half of them are expected to return to Ivory Coast in the next year. Ethiopia has taken a first step towards justice in its Somali region after the Attorney General indicted 46 people for grave human rights violations last August. The former president of the Somali region state, Abdi Mohamed Omer, was charged this week with inciting violence. Today, victims of his regime can finally speak freely, and our correspondents went to meet some of them. It was one of the most feared places in the region. This prison closed three months ago, but at the height of the crackdown, up to 8,000 prisoners were crammed inside, most charged with supporting rebel groups. Ahmed was one of the accused. This is a designated room where there could have been between 250 and 300 prisoners locked up. In 2015, Ahmed was falsely accused of being associated with the Ogden National Liberation Front, an armed pro-independence movement banned by the government. He spent a year in prison. One of the punishments was that we had to take off our clothes and stand for 24 hours. It could last for days and days. We didn't have the right to do any activity. We couldn't move. In Jijiga, the regional capital, many families were affected by the widespread arrests. Some are still missing loved ones. Abdi Salam went eight years without news of his brother. The guards took the food we brought. They gave no information. We didn't know if he was dead or alive. When my brother needed medicine because he was sick, they refused to bring it to him. His brother, now free, suffers from mental illness. Abdi Salam has a lot of hope for the new regional president, but there are huge challenges during the transitional period for this strategic border area. The former government was particularly focused on repelling the terrorist group Al-Shabaab back to Somalia. Who was secure? Every household was terrified every night. If it means uh, mobilizing armies on the border areas, chasing people here and there, yes, they were very effective. We can guarantee you that we are far more effective now. To move forward, the new administration will have to seek justice for victims of the old regime. The president hopes to create a commission of truth and reconciliation. His predecessor, still behind bars, is awaiting judgment. A new study looking at cigarettes exported to Morocco from Switzerland found that tobacco sold in the North African country is much stronger, more addictive and more toxic than that sold in Switzerland and France. In 2017, almost 3,000 tons of Swiss cigarettes were exported to Morocco. We're joined now by Marie Maurice, one of the investigative journalists behind the report. Marie, thanks for speaking to us. Now, according to the, the work that you did and the uh, data that you came across, how big is the difference between Swiss cigarettes sold in Morocco and those sold in Europe? Uh, it can be from uh, simple to double. Um, I'm speaking about the level of nicotine, for example. Um, the, um, the, the Swiss cigarettes I, I bought in Morocco um, are... I couldn't smoke them um, if I were in Switzerland. They, they would be illegal here because the level of nicotine, tar and carbon are too high. So uh, the difference is huge. And is this discrepancy between cigarettes sold in Morocco uh, indicative of a wider problem for smokers on the continent? I think so. Um, a lot of cigarettes are exported from uh, uh, Switzerland to Africa and, and various African countries. The problem is that these countries don't have a law um, which limits the level of nicotine, tar and carbon as we have in Switzerland and in Europe. So uh, um, cigarettes sold in Africa are toxic, more toxic than uh, the cigarettes we smoke here in Europe. And, and that's a big problem, I think. And is this, from the work that you've done on this, uh, down to uh, a failure by the receiving countries to set standards for cigarettes or because of an active and conscious decision 
by Swiss cigarette producers to export cigarettes that are made to different standards? I would say both. Um, the Swiss cigarette producer are the, the biggest producer in the world. This is Philippe Maurice, British Tobacco and Japan Tobacco. They are all producing cigarettes um, exported to African countries. And uh, at the same time, the, the countries in Africa, they cannot and they don't uh, apply, they don't manage to have a law um, limiting the level of nicotine and tar and protecting their population. So uh, the, both problems are um, important. And what is the effect of this on the uh, African smokers? Um, I spoke with a lot of smokers in Morocco uh, and they don't realize they are smoking uh, more toxic cigarettes. They think um, cigarettes made in Switzerland are better than the other one. In reality, uh, doctors and specialists in tobacco, they say um, that more tar in a cigarette, this is better um, for the for the body and uh, also more nicotine uh, is more addictive for people and that's precisely the goal of the um, firms um, which make cigarettes in Switzerland. They want people in Africa be uh, more dependent, uh, more addict to the cigarette because they need new clients. Thanks very much, Marie, for speaking to us. That is though where we're going to have to leave it. Thanks for joining us here on Eye on Africa. Do so again if you can. Take care.